Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tutor Chat subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is February 18th, 2020. This is the Mr. Report uh, Newsletter update for uh, newsletter number seven. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. Really, really exciting stuff. <clears throat> My interview with Crystal was uh, on the 16th, and um, let's see, or was it on Saturday? Anyway, we had a uh, very nice interview over the weekend, and that's right, she was going to have it processed for me by, the, by Sunday, and apparently she's running behind. So this is a really, really good interview. As soon as it comes out, well, it'll be it'll be listed right here as the more recent. This is our our previous interview right here from the 29th of November. So this is going to be really, really good. That was a, a very nice interview. Then before I get started, special notice: if you are a Black Star or a Mister Report newsletter subscriber, Tutor Group subscriber, Survivor Group subscriber. Then, uh, and you're inside the continental United States, that's important. So you can now purchase nano silver, the concentrate, two little bottles that Doug's going to send you. Two little bottles of concentrate make six liters of nano silver. Six liters, that's 12.6 something pints. One pint of this nano silver is $50. This is over $600 worth of nano silver. Great offer that Doug is letting us um, participate in. You have to be a subscriber. That's the only, you have to be inside the lower uh, 48 to get the fifth for, for $50 because of the shipping. If you're outside the United States, if you'll write me, Terrell at Terrell03.com, then we'll, I'll let you know what that number is for different parts uh, wh of where you are in the world. That's gonna cover extra cook. It covers the extra shipping, and handling and the process. Uh, uh, Doug has to do different things for if it's outside the continental um, United States. So um, you get more, you get information right here, watching a special video, and you can get information here going to nanosilver.com. Find out what it's uh, what it's all about. This is to, for protection against the coronavirus. And there's a lot of the stories in this newsletter and in the Black Star newsletter are going to be about the coronavirus. I'm watching it daily for you guys. And uh, we're still in the gestation period right now. With the incubation period, if you're, people are faulting China for not reporting what was happening early on with this. But I don't believe that the whole problem is China. And their reporting, I don't believe that's what it is. It's the bug. This bug... You can carry it around for 24 days without showing a symptom. You don't even know you have it, and it's in flu season. So people have runny noses and snivels and sneezes and things. So it's, it's, this is, this is, we're in the incubation period here in the United States. It's blowing out of control in China. And they don't know, they're not necessarily giving us the right numbers and on the desk and everything like that. So this is the quiet before the storm here in the United States. I highly recommend getting reports from people that they're buying they're going to these uh, silver. This is the treatment, the antiviral. This is Wendy's, our project, um, our project uh, a clinical biologist. This is nano silver. That's what she uses as her go-to antiviral. When you go to the hospital, they say, well, you can't do anything about it if it's a virus. Well, sure you can. This is an alternative treatment, and this works. So I'll get into more of that after we talk a little bit here about what Nod Nod uh, Nodgy wrote. A uh, sub subscriber, really good supporter. And uh, this is what he says. He says, um, Brother Terrell, I thank you for Mystery Report 11. And um, February 11th, 2020. I truly enjoy your insight. It was, I was led to share with you my insight about when at 1 hour and 4 minutes and 59 seconds you spoke about the secret. A secret that he kept from his children. We're talking about God in the infinite realm. The day came when God had to keep 
a secret. That's why he created Satan, the anointed cherub that covers. So he could keep these secrets from his children, which led to, eventually, the Satanic Rebellion. And the need to create Adam. When Satan was running around, at, when he first began all this stuff, there was no such thing as Adam yet. That's the thing to realize. Then came the need for a sacrificial lamb in the infinite realm, and that's when God created Adam. That's what he was created for. Read Isaiah 53 in the past tense, and it's going to be about Adam in the infinite realm. Adam suffering under the God of this world for 930 years, reproducing what happened in the infinite realm. Ecclesiastes 1 started 9. Okay, that made you anger and you beautifully explain yourself and it gave me greater insight into the spirit of iniquity or the mystery of iniquity and he's, th he's thanking me and then and that's the thing about my commentary is that um, and, and it's true of when you're reading scripture is that when you read scripture and you're, and you're a babe in Christ you're gonna absorb certain things it's like drinking milk and then there's intermediates and then there's the mature that are over on the right side of the spectrum, they're going to get more. So, as um, you're hearing my commentary, then the first time you go through something, you might get the milk part. The next part, you've grown a little bit. You've read more of Pauline epistles. You've, and then you're going to get a little bit more. That's the way that it works. He's going to make a clarifying statement here about that here in a minute. And here's my perspective about a secret, a mystery. Well, before I go any further, this is where I'm at. I'm going to mark the spot here. And take you over here because I want to read you a little bit about the mystery of iniquity. For the mystery of lawlessness, it's, uh, the King James Version is going, to, is going to use the term iniquity here. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he who now restrains and uh, Elena made um, a statement in her writing down below in the featured section. There's a quite a lengthy article that she put there. I wanted to have time to comment, to get my comments on. I haven't had time to to yet. But she's, she's going to make mention of this too. Um, the mystery of iniquity that's already at work. She's, she's going to be talking about the restrainer, which is just above in this passage. So um, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, he re now restrains is the Holy Spirit as the spirit of prophecy there's a lot of debate about what's going on here in uh, especially the first six verses of Paul's second letter to the the second chapter and the second letter to the Thessalonians some of the most difficult verses to interpret so the what this is talking about I wrote about it recently before Elena came along this is one of the things that I wanted to say to her that the spirit of prophecy is what's going to be the inhibitor. It's the thing that's going to be the restrainer because prophecy is written, for example, you read Matthew 24. Christ says what's going to happen first, what's going to happen second, what's happens third, what happens fourth. The, the, uh, for example, the gospel of the kingdom has to go to the whole world and then the end shall come. Matthew 24, 14. Well, that has to happen first before what happens in verse 21 comes the great tribulation. And before, in verse 16, in between those things, then you have to have the prince from Daniel set up as abomination of desolation that Paul's talking about in the, the beginning of this chapter. I, I didn't pull up the whole chapter. So the, the restrainer is the Holy Spirit and as a spirit of prophecy because some things have to happen first. And then this next thing happens. And then the next thing happens. You go to good examples in Daniel. It tells you what happens at the particular weeks. Well, the things that happen at the end of the age cannot happen in week um, 62 of the 70 weeks. Cannot happen. It has to happen in order. That's the restrainer. It's pretty simple once you think about it. And you look at the sequential events of Matthew 24 that Christ is talking about. A, B, C, D, they happen in order. D cannot happen before A because of the restrainer. That's what Paul's saying here. Then... That lawless one, which he's talking about, the prince of Daniel. Daniel, go to Daniel 9, start at uh, 24. And then um, that lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his coming and bring to an end the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all the powers and false wonders, 
with all deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they may be judged who did not believe in the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. And there's a common denominator here with what Trevor's writing me, what Brian's writing me, and Lena's writing me, right? And now what Najee's writing me right here has to do with the mystery of iniquity. And the thing to realize about the mystery of iniquity or this mystery of lawlessness is that it is the antithesis, do antithesis doctrine to the body of, to the mystery of Christ. We're baptized into Christ. Those who disobey our gospel, those who, who obey false gospels, they're baptized in the body of the Antichrist. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. They're seated in the lake of fire in the beast. Same exact way. They both have heavenly counterparts. Heaven of Genesis 1.1. So that's the reason that you cannot help them. This mystery of iniquity is something that is, is insidious. You're trying to help people. and For three years I didn't write a word for God. Not one word. Because I was so furious. Angry. He would show me all these things. I could see him. I share them to people. He blinds them. Everywhere you go, people can't see it. They're calling you a heretic. They want to treat you like they treated John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. And I got sick of it because I didn't understand it yet. When I grew in understanding, it took me a while for God to take me around the bend and up and down the mountain. And three years later, all of a sudden, the light comes on. These are, this is, these are the things that they, as they played out in God's infinite realm. We're just replaying it over and over and over again. The free will is in the infinite realm. Yes, there's free will, but it's in the infinite realm. In this realm, this is the effect realm. The cause is the infinite realm. This is the effect right here. Let's, um, let's head back over here. Okay, here about the secret. So the secret that's being kept in the infinite realm is something different than the secret that God is keeping from Satan in this evil age. So the secret that we're talking about is what God had to hide from the gods in God's infinite realm. The locations of certain secret passageways is just one thing. Some things God decided in his infinite wisdom to keep a secret until it led to the destruction of his sons. Now there's something wrong in my mind. There's something that's wrong there. But everything is going to come out in the wash in the end. And we are created. So it's not for us to say to the creator what's up. It's for us to uh, to do what he expects of us as he speaks through, his, through God's words, through the Pauline epistles. And then we'll be given our explanation on the other side of the veil that we're rapidly approaching right now. Here's my um, perspective about a secret, which is mystery. If you read uh, Mysterion, the def true definition is something that's kept secret. It's not the mysterious, like we think of the word mystery. It is uh, something that is to be revealed, something kept secret, hidden in God, and then revealed at the proper time. A cherubim has four faces, the face of an ox, face of an eagle, face of a lion, and the face of a man. And then he's, he's quoting uh, Revelation 1.8, which I've done for you guys. This is the three witnesses of the Almighty, which are also in these three witnesses. So there's four witnesses here, but the same thing that John testifies about, the face of the man, the eagle, the lion, the bullock. So Naji sees a similarity here, and there is a similarity. And I write, yes, there's a correlation between the cherubim described in Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 10. You can go check those out. And the Almighty. And then um, Naji says, it was never a secret to the word. No, well, God and his word are one in the infinite realm. The point is that the day came when God decided to keep a secret from his sons, which led to the creation of the anointed cherub that covers. Satan is an infinite realm host. Singularity, like God. There's no such thing as God to come, God who is and God who was in the infinite realm. No such thing. God and his word are one. They're singularity. The same thing. It's 
if God's going to interact with us in this realm, then he must do it through his word, who is broken down into Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because the creation is broken down into heaven, heaven, and earth. You have a spirit, soul, and a body. There's no such thing as a spirit, soul, or body in the infinite realm, only in this broken universe. So, um, there, I never intimated anywhere that the secret, it was kept secret from the Word, who's one with God in the infinite realm. But there are things that the incarnate Son of God, the Word of God made flesh, doesn't know. That is ordained by the Father. And Christ says that over and over again. He even says that it's not for the disciples to know what God has, has fixed by his own authority. That's Acts 1, 6 and 7. So then, pardon me. Naji writes, God who was, ox, bullock, absolutely right. God who is, is the Lord God, that's the eagle. That's right too. God to come, the lion. The last face of the cherubim is the man of God, the word. Absolutely true. And whenever you look through this diagram, see John standing here? This is his descriptions of what he sees because he's looking straight through these realms. He sees the face of the man. And the, this is Christ. He sees the three witnesses of the Almighty testifying. The eagle is the one speaking. All the, the, um, when God speaks in Genesis 1, 26, and let's like make man in our image, the eagle is doing the speaking to his prophet and to his priest. From our perspective, that's how we see. If we were over here looking back from the other side of the veil, all we see is the Almighty and his word. There is no such thing as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit there. There's no such thing as God who is, God who was, God who is to come in the infinite realm. There's no such thing. These are created incarnations for our benefit because this is a created realm and this is a created realm. This is heaven and this is earth. Kingdom of his beloved son is heaven. Kingdom of this world, this is earth of Genesis 1-1. This is God of the infinite realm, his realm. This is where we are gods. Right here. Okay. So we may disagree here. Sometimes we can get tangled up with semantics. And he, he did, I'm interpreting because of my experiences things by his choice of terms. I'm interpreting things one way when he really means something else. That happens in biblical discussions all the time. So I, I can't say we can't. We are we are in disagreement. I disagree with you, but it, you know, we may be. The three witnesses of the Almighty are the bullock, the eagle, and the lion, just like I just said. The face of the man is Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. The cherubim have their outward and inward appearance due to the throne they serve, which in this case is the throne of the Almighty and His living Word. That's why John sees them as four witnesses when he's looking through. Because this is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man, an incarnation, Jesus Christ, the face of the man. We see God in the face of Christ because of this, what you see in this diagram. Because the man's perspective is straight through the Lamb, the center of this universe, the heavens and the earth, heaven, the center of heaven of Genesis 1-8 is where the Lamb is standing in the center of the throne, Revelation Chapter 7, verse 17. Those on the sea of glass are right in front of them. Body of Moses, the invisible sea. People on the body of Moses, they, the host, they can't see. Their angel half's on that far side. They only think there's just a sea there, but there's really an invisible sea on the back. Their angel halves, they have yet to be restored by becoming members of the Lamb. We are members of the Lamb. Okay. So, it depends on the throne they serve. That's why they have the features and characteristics of it. And if you look and you have this line of vision, then these witnesses are never going to appear to turn. You're going to be looking at the face of the man and the three witnesses that appear, and it looks like four witnesses is what they look like. So whenever you go back and you read about the cherubim in Ezekiel 1, right off the bat, this is what he's talking about. And then he does it again in Ezekiel 10. And you'll notice that he's describing how they're moving and there's wheels that are inside. Those wheels are the power centers. They're like the chakras or the power centers that are inside of our bodies. They are typical. What's going on inside of us is typical of what's going on out in the cosmos. It's typical of what's going on in God's throne. 
There's wheels on the there's eyes on the inside and there's eyes on the outside. There's wheels on the inside too. Those are descriptions. And whenever you realize who's a spirit witness, who's a water witness, who's a blood witness, everything makes more sense. So that and I, I pull up the chart, the charts during my interview with Crystal to show you how all the singularities are expressing themselves through three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, and the blood witness is the one that testifies for the original singularity. So there's patterns here that help you. You're going to get some of the spirit witness information from, from God um, to come. You're going to get some from my Father who art in heaven, some from the heavens. You know what they all have in common? They all have the glory. written. The heavens is written about with the glory. The, my Father who art in heaven, glory. The glory the spirit witnesses that's handed down to the spirit the water and the blood witnesses so there's common features and characteristics of all spirit witnesses God gives you a piece of it in each one you're supposed to recognize them all as spirit witnesses and then their combined testimony becomes angel song that sings like a harmony like a chorus like and then an orchestra the sound coming out of your heart is something behold whenever you see all the witnesses and you've read God's Word so many times and it's it's a living the scripture is a living thing Christ in you is a living incarnation of heaven that is a living incarnation of God's Word so um, it depends on the throne they serve these cherubim that Ezekiel is describing serve this throne they are protectors of this throne whenever Adam and Eve were driven from the heavenly garden they were driven out of this section right here and the cherubs guarded the way depends on the throne that they serve that's the appearance that they're going to have the mystery diagram show God in figure one his word they're encased inside the envelope beyond time and space so you this circle this ring that's right here this is the second veil. See, the second veil encompasses these two realms within t time and space. This, the first veil, is formed by this the circle around the Father and the um, God and the heaven of Genesis 1:1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And whenever I show you that original diagram, they have a circle around them just like this see the circle beyond the veil of time and space God in his word God in heaven of Genesis 1 1 share the, a, the relationship within this circle outside of time and space the secret to understanding the predestination the P in Calvin's tulip is understanding this relationship right here this is how God chooses you in Christ before the foundations of the world because they have this relationship beyond the veil of time and space Calvin never understood that now within this realm of time and space this envelope it's created heaven and earth are created realms that are not real this is the only realm that's real these these two realms are created like a soul and like a body for the restoration of Adam the first Adam the last Adam God's Word is an incarnation this is the Son of God with a big S. This is the Son of God with a little S. And then, when you break them down, same verse. God is still shown as a singularity expression here. But here you see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see the heavens, heaven, and earth. All three of them are here as the man of God. This is in man form. This is in tabernacle form. This is the spirit, soul, and the body of the man of God. All there is is God, heaven, and earth. That's all there is. Everybody inside of these realms is a member of Adam's body, Christ's body, and God's body. That's the way it works. You know, put, making it simple. So you see my more complicated diagram? It's this same diagram. It's the same one. It's just speak, spirit, spirit, soul. And, you're just giving more of the details later in my book. That's what it boils down to. Okay, so the... the um, the mystery diagram show God, his word, encased inside the envelope beyond time and space, forming the first veil. 
that's the top center. It's a little bit difficult to see the rings here, so I pulled up the other ones to show you. The cherubim are singularity host broken down into their three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, while the word aspect is represented as the fourth witness, the face of the cherubim. So the face that you would see on there is the face of Christ. We see God in we see God in the face of Christ. When you look inwardly, you're going to see when when you're more mature, you will be able, with your spiritual eyes see Christ in you. What Paul writes about in Colossians 1, start at 24. Christ in you, the hope of glory, this mystery among the Gentiles. It's heaven, this entire realm incarnate inside of you. The face that's on that realm, guess who? Christ. The same face you're going to see on that cherub because it's serving the throne of God where Christ is right there. <laughs> that's the reason why. So the cherubim are singularly host broken into the three witnesses, while the word aspect is representing the four witnesses of the face. He says, I would also like to clarify myself when I describe the mystery explained as like reading the book of John. And he's going to make a clarifying statement, which I do all the time. I, Najee, am not in any manner comparing it to scripture, but the Bible is the living word of God, at, but as many new Christian Christians hear that hear the gospel, and starts reading the New Testament. When you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then John, John talks about the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of John is on a different level entirely to me. And this is, you know, I didn't realize this, Najee, when you first wrote me about the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Son of God. He is an incarnation. There is no such thing as Jesus Christ in the infinite realm. No such thing. Jesus Christ has no need of being restored. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. The Word and God in the infinite realm, they're one. They're the same thing. Most powerful thing, the entire realm. God's Word. Now that is where the Word is God. And not that He was God, He is God. The reason that it's written in the past tense in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, is because Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh that he's talking about, is an incarnation. That's the reason why. So when you're going to start talking about the deity, that's as if Jesus is God. Jesus is not God. Jesus is the Son of God. You, we need Jesus Christ to be our one mediator between God and men. That is actually Christ Jesus. There's a difference between Jesus Christ and Christ. Jesus wrote about that, and there's defending. I'm defending that down in this newsletter from, on the, uh, from ChristianForums.com. Many people are being slain by this doctrine that Jesus is God and man, and he's neither. He's something between God and man. That's how come he can be the one mediator between God, who's infinite, and man, who is finite. The Son of God and heaven are almost infinite. There's something in between. Then the, the book of John is on a different level to me. The book of John is on a different level to everybody because you are right that the three, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the synoptic books, the synoptic gospels, then they share a lot of information. They re-say a lot of the things, and there's many of the things that you see in the book of John are not in there. So the, the point that I was making, I had to slow down. I go, ah, I understand what you're saying. I misinterpreted at first what he thought. My, the point of my commentary was that readers of varying levels of spiritual development see a range of different things. That's the same if you're reading my book, the same if you're reading the scriptures. Um, then reading scripture and reading the mystery explained multiple times creates the opportunity to see those different, those, those deeper things. Some people see it the first time. Even reading the Pauline epistles, you're reading the first time, you're going to get some things out. You're going to get more the second time, you're going to get more the third time. That's the only comparison that I was made. There's only one living document, and that's God's living word. I'm not trying to make any comparisons like that. That my book helps you to use scripture. It is a water witness helper, if anything. And that's the way I explain it in my book. I can show you that diagram. Right here, God's living word, spirit witness. My book, Water Witness. This is your work in the middle. 
this is the blood witness that grows to become bigger than this bigger than this and this combined by the time you're finished this is an ongoing work you're going to discover three witness mystery sets in scripture that I haven't listed and and this is right at the like page 14 right at the start to show you where mine is a water witness and it's blue for that reason there's, there's color coding throughout the mystery explain God's book gold and then your folder I encourage you to get a red one and then you for each diagram you're gonna have a diagram for the spirit blood and water of the Father Son and Holy Spirit you're gonna have them for each paper here this is about the water witness the Holy Spirit this is about the blood witness the only begotten Son this is about my father word in heaven and you're listing them here you see you have the heavens heaven and earth the spirit soul and the body all these witnesses and you can just actually draw out the diagrams like this is drawn out actually draw them out the the new nature the new man that's inside of you is working with you those spiritual eyes are the ones that are developing the mind of Christ that's inside your new nature is the one that's going to show you all these things all I have is seeds that's all I have is seeds nothing more than seeds and water that's it the little guy inside of you the new man that starts off like a little baby Jesus in the manger and it grows up to be something very powerful once you slay the flesh and let it take over then you're gonna see what I'm talking about and then the uh, the next diagram this is a little, this is a little further into the book and then you see more and more of these pages the contents these these different witnesses show and even the family showing the man the woman and the seed the offspring so there's a cover page for each chapter all those instructions are inside of the uh, my book the mystery explained so then summing up my thoughts I believe the living God the, the living God our Father has given you a gift of knowledge and insight your diagrams your research years of steadfast love for the word has blessed me uh, to see greater than I could and I want to give all praise to, uh, to the Father and God bless you very very much this um, the process took decades to do and many Saturday mornings I searched the internet looking for someone who was ahead of, of me so I could learn from them so I could hire them as my tutor because I wanted to see these things back in the 80s whenever we got our internet from the guy down the corner there was no AOL there was no I was writing to Dr. Clifford Denton didn't even have the internet it was using the US post office or living in London using the post office over there writing to scholars around the world I got their contact information and now um, the, the book was written this book that I keep showing the mystery explained was written in 2004 2005 it was completed in 2005 just published in November of 2017 and and the work began back in the late 70s early 80s it took a long time I wish I had somebody to uh, to show me there was nobody there and then after discovering these things it was kind of like uh, um, when Einstein discovered relativity he's trying to write about it well there was only a dozen people in the planet that could even have a conversation with him about it at the time that was a problem that I was having back so I was going to Bible study every Monday night and outgrowing my group and then they started looking at me funny going wait a minute we talking about these witnesses and everything that's what God was showing me but he has to choose you to see it look at the word mysterion and you'll see that there's knowledge withheld and then revealed at the appropriate time at a time chosen by God so there was a time for the Apostle Paul to share these aspects of the mystery so it wasn't shown before 60 or 61 AD his books do not contain the information those letters and then they did after that after the close of Acts that's why the prison epistles are just loaded down with the stuff but it's also a time of God's choosing for each in member in each individual member of Christ's body some of you guys are looking at my stuff and going holy this is just crazy it's too complicated why would anybody this is how God revealed it to me this is the only way that I've been able to figure out how to show people using Venn diagrams overlapping circles then um, and I hear um, the same type of uh, things from uh, from lots of other people and the thing that's great for me now is that there are people walking around 
that can understand it and we can have a conversation about it did not have that before so I, my I do the same thing that you're doing I'm thinking God so you guys see this as a gift my work is a gift. I see you guys as a gift because you can see it and you can understand it and I, I'm not the only one that sees it anymore and it's really really great to, to whenever uh, when other people can see it and I can sense the enthusiasm in your voice in your writing it's, it just bleeds through when, once you see it you're like a little kid on Christmas morning and you're off running and when you send me your questions, you make your statements, it helps me to see what you can see and what you can't see, and what, what's around the corner that God has in store for you. Then um, that's what I just said. This was not the case going back into the 80s. So you guys are a real blessing to me too. Brian and Trevor and Najee and um, Elena, who has an article down in here, and others of you guys, Crystal, you guys are going to really like this um, interview whenever it comes through. She's um, behind some of you, but that those lead to the best questions oftentimes. Somebody that just gets exposed to it, they just kind of start seeing it. Then all of a sudden, they're seeing it more and more in their questions. You can follow their line of questions, and you can, you can sense the enthusiasm bubbling as they're seeing more and more of it. Then he says... Um, I understand after long prayer with difficulty about Genesis 1:26 and Genesis 2:7, the six day people and the seventh day people. A lot of people have questions about that in Bible study. And so, question one: six day people, Asian descent, like Japanese, Korean, etc., or just Chinese, China. I understand that North, Central, and South American Indians, people, Australia, Aborigines, Oriental races, all the or Oriental races, are six day people. The the Ancient races, that's what they are. They've been here a long, long time. A lot longer than white men. The ancient races have RH um, positive, exclusive blood and are generally beardless. The evolved races, they evolved from the waters of Genesis 1.20. And they are connected, they're tethered astrally to heaven of Genesis 1.8. The seventh day people are tethered to heaven of Genesis 1.1. We're tethered in different places. God deals with us in different ways. We're members of do, we're totally different dispensations. Six-day people and seventh-day people. Seventh-day people are here to be judged. It's for a man to die once and then the judgment. Hebrews 9.27. That doesn't apply to six-day people. Six-day people, you can look in, at, at people that are like the people of India. Good example. Little children, seven years old. They're writing about events from whenever their previous lives. And they're able to track down that person. Yes, that person died. And this seven-year-old little girl was this person's husband. And he, she knows everything that he knew. For some reason, it, retaining the information. How is that possible? Six-day people are on evolutionary paths. American Indians, beardless, RH positive, exclusive. Ancient races, they're evolving, spiraling upwards and outwards they eventually become infinite as members of Adam's body. In other words, when Adam was made in the infinite realm, the day God made him, these hosts were made inside of him. Adam had members of his body before any of his brethren started incarnated inside of him. The brethren that incarnated inside of him are the seventh-day people here. The people that were already here, the six-day people, they're all victims. When Satan murdered Adam, all of them died. They're being restored one member at a time, just like the Seventh-day people. All the Sixth-day people are being restored. Only some of the Seventh-day people are because some of the Seventh-day people are from Cain. They're from the serpent. They're from the Satan. They're not supposed to be restored. They're here to be judged, to go into the lake of fire, to be cut off from the infinite realm. So the uh, Sixth-day people, when the gospel goes out, it is only for Seventh-day people. It's only for the sons of God, not the members of Adam's body. The members of Adam's body are covered because they're members of Adam's body. They're here as victims of the Seventh-day people. So when the, for example, the Spanish Inquisition, Seventh-day people, whenever they were going around conquering the whole world, they were conquering Sixth-day people and destroying them. Here in the United States, whole tribes of Indians are wiped out by the bug, by the pneumonia, by the the plagues that were brought with the Spanish. They even put them on the blankets deliberately to kill the people. This is replay of what happened in the infinite realm. 
So when Adam was being attacked, the members of his body were being killed, just like the Spanish did. We're redoing things that are already done. That's the important thing to realize. And when you're going, you're taking the gospel to these six-day people, that's not what it's for. That's all deception. That's all an illusion. They're not destined to be um, judged for sins or crimes associated with the satanic rebellion. They never had opportunity to participate in that. They've always been members of Adam's body. Adam, they're victims. Every single one of them is a victim. They're waiting for the, uh, their father to show up just like the sons from space are, just like the sons of Israel are, just like many of the, the um, religions around the world are waiting, the anointed one, the anticipated one, however you want to characterize it. They're waiting for him. And it's going to be, Elijah's coming to restore all things. That's another skin for our father Adam. That's who's coming back. Okay, so that's what I want to share with you here. Um, whenever that's, I just characterized exactly what is written up here. So when you read I, Isaiah 53, like I said earlier, you're reading about Adam in the infinite realm and 930 years under the, him as the God of this world. Then uh, scripture tells us about Noah's flood and only eight survived. This is uh, Naji. And Noah has three sons, yes, and there are three sons of spirit, blood, and water, too. And you're going to see that the third son is a slave to the other two, just like the Holy Spirit is the helper, and Eve is the helper. The third one is uh, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Ham, his descendants, Nimrod, slaves. Okay, Noah has three sons, Genesis 9:18. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth the, is the blood witness, by the way. He's the one that enlarges. Owns the houses, lit dwells in the houses and enlarges, servant of both. And uh, having to do with the nakedness. These three sons are the lineages of the repopulated earth. I am having a hard time. Or am I not connecting how they, they be six-day people currently? I understand why we can make distinctions about their religions and cultures. Also knowing the story of Noah's flood because... Shortly after the Tower of Babel, then the languages. Please help me to understand. Here's the trick. If you're when you're reading about Elijah and Elisha, they're going across the the Jordan River. Well, they weren't going to wait for no boat. Elijah, he wants to go across right now, so he takes his mantle off and he smacks the side of the banks, and the waters divide right in front of him. They walk across. He smacks them on the other side. Water comes back. When you're reading, you're going to realize the water is heaped up on both sides, which is impossible, right? It's impossible, but it's not. This is what God did. Yes, the, the bowels of the earth opened up. And yes, the water came out. And yes, it rained. But the water was heaped up in a particular location, and that's in the Euphrates Basin. That when it, And you're going to understand, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, this is the post that I wrote years ago about the Erich Shift. Eretz. This is a word like earth. This is the word used for in the beginning God created the heaven and the Eretz. But this word is used throughout Genesis. And just like the word earth can mean this whole planet or it can mean a handful of dirt. It can mean the entire universe. It can be our local solar system. It can be our local constellation, the solar system, our earth, or the land of the garden. Or it can be a handful of dirt. So you have, when you're reading this, you have to realize when God is, God's word is talking about Eretz in Genesis 1. In the beginning, he created the heaven and the Eretz. That's the entire heavens and the earth and everything. And as you're reading Genesis, it's getting to be smaller Eretz. Then it's the local constellation. Then it's the the our local earth our regular our earth and then it's the land of the garden so the same word in genesis 1 1 that re represents the entire universe seen and unseen represents the land of the garden now that's the, the, when you understand the eric shift god is shifting the meaning of that word then you're going to realize it wasn't the whole eric's world that was flooded it was the eric's land of the garden that was flooded and how did it that's the reason that the ark was found where it was in turkey the mountains there, because that was the west. If you look at the prevailing winds in the northern hemisphere, they go from, they go towards the northeast. That's where they found 
the arc. And I did calculations on this years ago. If it had only a certain speed, not very fast, it would have been circled the planet a couple times. But it was still in the Euphrates Basin on the upper, the northwest edge, because that's where the waters were piled up. And then, so in other words, Noah didn't have to go to Australia to get kangaroos. Didn't have to. It didn't flood there. The land of the garden had its the, the animals that were in it, and those are the ones that he took into the garden. Those are the ones that are going to be affected by when the water was heaped up in that region. And then after it was over, it's not like yet that Noah had to take elephants back to Africa and certain ones back to India because they're different species. Certain, that's not the way it worked. The flood was local to the Euphrates Basin. This is the same land as the Promised Land between the Great um, River of Egypt and the Great U River Euphrates. This is the same place where when you get um, Haley's, Holly's, Haley's Bible Handbook, and about page 114 on the, the, the volume that I had, then you'll see kings that live up to be 48,000 years old. These were kings from the Euphrates Basin from the times of old. That is where the kingdom of Israel is going to be. That's the Euphrates Basin is the land that's the earth representation of what's in heaven. That's where Adam and Eve started off in this land on the earth. Same one that's David's kingdom. Same one that's um, it, the promised land, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Same land. That's the land that we're talking about here. Once you get that, realize that's local. He didn't, I mean, it's a big giant ark. It's not going to hold all these animals from all over the planet. It's going to hold the ones that are right there in that local region, though, the ones that are going to be affected by the flood. It was the seventh day people that were descended from Cain that were infiltrating the righteous branch that had to be killed and wiped out. They were local to the Euphrates Basin. They didn't have those people, Seventh Day people, in Australia with the Aborigine people yet. They didn't go to Americas yet. The American Indians were already there, but they didn't get flooded. It was only local. So once you realize that God lifted those, he, he, that's, he heaped the water there in that place to destroy the righteous branch that was infiltrated by your seed from Genesis 3.15. The only ones that were left from the righteous branch to be saved were from Noah's lineage. And it's not that six-day people came from them. That's not the way it happened. So they had their, the, the, those sons had their wives. That's where they started the 12 tribes of Israel. The people that would go down the lineage and be because from Japheth, that's where my descendants came from, from Europe. So from Shem, Japheth, and Ham, then you have those that came from Shem that ended up, when you follow the lineages down, that became the sons of Israel. And um, so anyway, the flood was local. Not, uh, not the entire world. But it's going to say the whole world. But that world is, is Eretz. And it's going to mean the whole land of the garden. So remember, Scripture is written to be interpreted in different ways. So that the sons of God get one one interpretation, and the sons of the devil get something that's something else, and the deluding influence is what has them by the nose, so they're never going to see what the truth is. Even if you stand right in front of them and you explain it to them using diagrams, they will not see it. They will think you're a heretic. That's the way that it works. So then, um, on, then on the personal note, he says um, the reason I watched uh, watch your channel. Um, and read from your articles multiple times is so I don't miss anything. And lots of people say the same thing. And and one of your videos um, and video posts, one of your videos posts, uh, but not in the Dropbox folder articles, you used a word that concerned me that was a red flag. You were giving a verbal illustration of how um, Zechariah in, uh, the, the, uh, entered the Holy of Holies, Zechariah actually, and then uh, he received the Holy Spirit. That's Luke 1, 5. And that's how John the Baptist was baptized in his mother's womb, mother in, his, in Elizabeth's womb, because that spirit came with Zacharias and then entered her womb whenever John was in. So John was in his mother's womb and was baptized in his mother's womb from the spirit from behind the second veil in the temple 
make that connection because the spirit that's in Genesis 1-2 that's over, moving over the surface of the waters, the same spirit that's saying come in Revelation 22-17, there's a line, there's a thread all the way through the scriptures that uh, that's connected. And this connection, with the passing of the baton, the Holy Spirit baton, happens between Zacharias and John the Baptist through the Holy Spirit behind the second veil that Zacharias picked up when he was there. It struck him dumb. Zacharias laughed. He didn't believe it. That his wife could be pregnant. And then the Spirit says, okay. Well, Zacharias couldn't say a word until it was all done. And um, so then the Holy Spirit goes to Jesus Christ in the Jordan River at his baptism, Matthew 3. And then Christ says, I can't go until, I mean, I can't send you the helper unless I go away. So he goes away, and on the day of Pentecost, they got the Holy Spirit. Then Paul gets the Holy Spirit, road to Damascus, but the transfer takes place in the ministry in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, which is, that's the verse where the Holy Spirit is speaking. And he says, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work for which I've given them. And then Paul, that's where it says, Paul, who's also known, Saul, who's also known as Paul, you notice he's called Paul after that, and he's called Saul before that. Even though his name doesn't change. Paul is like Peter. He has two names. Most of the Jews have two names. They have a Roman Gentile name. They're occupied by the Romans. And then they have their Jewish name. Paul's Jewish name that he was born with in Tarsus is Saul. His Gentile name, because he's also a Roman citizen, is Paul. Scripture just switches the name in verse uh, Acts 13. Because that's whenever the ministry, they're given that their marching orders to go to the Gentiles and things like that. That's the reason why. So then uh, he's going to scold me a little bit, which don't mind criticism whatsoever. And he's right. The term Shekinah glory, pardon me, again, is not in the Holy Scriptures. And it is part of Jewish tradition. And some could say that it's part of secular Jewish tradition. So, in other words, coming from a particular sect. So, I thought about it for a little while, prayed about it a little while, and decided that maybe I don't, I just need to talk about the uh, the mercy seat, the spirit above the mercy seat in the temple or in the tabernacle of Moses. I don't have to refer to it. If it's uh, going to cause my brother to stumble, in other words, there's no sense in using it if it's not in Scripture. Although the word Bible is also not in, is not in Scripture. And we, we use we coined several terms and phrases that are not in the Bible, actually. But they help us to understand um, concepts, ideas, things like that. But I can see where this could this could cause problems. So I'm going to modify after this report. Of, and I'm going to do my best not to uh, make the reference in the way that I did did there before. So I appreciate your correction. It, hel it helps me to give better testimony if uh, being mindful of some of these buzzwords that are that turn people off you know so with the remaining time we'll go through a little bit what's in this newsletter and this is uh this is occupying I'm going to make a coronavirus update for the black star newsletter too this is currently the top featured article in the other newsletter and I'm sharing it with you guys here this is occupying this is sucking the air out of the room here in the United States globally this is very very important stuff something that we cannot ignore so um, here's the update report that I just made you notice that I'm making them pretty regular here on this right here this one was made for clarifying statements because Doug um, he found things that I was saying just like uh, using the word Shakina here that I'm making some you know not horrendous or terrible mistakes but I'm making some I've been making some uh, minor mistakes in my my uh, the, my use of terms that could be misleading and um, so Doug wrote me and I think uh, I have a copy of his message down here below and so that's this is going to be my reply this update report is the same as my reply because I always want to be on the same page with Doug Doug has helped me he's been God sent to me and helped save my life with this the, the the nano silver not from saving me from the coronavirus it was from saving me from bacterial infection that was growing in my jaw that the, 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 the new dentist that I had said that I had it for years, and that's the reason that people thought that I had Alzheimer's or something. People that know me, 
because I, I generally have almost a photographic mind. A photograph, I can all just recite to you the first 14 verses of the Gospel of John from memory without breaking, you know, a sweat easy. And then all of a sudden I'm having trouble remembering what we saw on the TV yesterday. And so the people that are around me, people that love me, they were getting really concerned about me. One, because it was like I was losing my mind or something, but it was a bacterial infection that was eating into my brain and getting into the my spinal fluid. And it, that stuff goes to your heart. It can kill you. And so the dentist tells me, she says, uh, that they, because my old dentist that I don't go to anymore, obviously, they've sent me over there because I had mobility in one tooth. She had to pull six teeth, she said, because we're going to put you on antibiotics. We'd have to have you on antibiotics for a really long time and still might not get all this killed unless we pull more teeth. They pulled six of my teeth in the back since had crowns and stuff put in. And um, so anyway, the um, Doug is the one that wrote me and after he, hearing and I, was, I have difficulty sharing that type. It's kind of embarrassing, you know. And um, so he was the one that told me about the nano silver because people have sent me colloidal silver before. But this nano silver is to kill the gets in the nooks and crannies. It goes in the places that the regular colloidal silver can't go. To kill contagions, to kill infections, to kill. It's not just for a vir an antiviral. It's it has a whole bunch of different uses. And this is uh, you see that website? I hope you guys will go there. Educate yourself. They're going to be talking about using vaccines and things, and I do not trust the government to stick anything into my arm. It could be the, the second half of a binary weapon that interacts with coronavirus. I don't trust him. I trust Doug, though. Doug's proven himself to me. He helped me. And um, he wants to help you, too. This, that's his ministry. Like, this is my ministry, God's wisdom, and diagrams, and things like that. This is Doug's ministry. And he's very serious about it. Like, I am about my... Doug is that serious. He serves the same God that I do. And I trust him. And I I will give you a testimonial. For um, So this is a recent update. This is Doug's clarifying statements. And don't have time to go through all this. But he uh, he straightened me out the way that, that Najee straightened me out about the Shekinah. He straightened me out that he is he's not a doctor. He doesn't want to mislead anybody. And I never want to mislead anybody either. But the thing that I realized is, is that it was because um, Doug never told me that he was a, a physician. But when I'm writing him, then his email address is Dr. and then his last name. And when and I have other subscribers that are doctors and they have um, Dr. Laura or Dr. And then because they're a doctor, you know. And so when I saw DR in his last name, I just assumed, I didn't realize that it could be for Doug, Richard, his last name. I didn't realize that. So whenever um, he sent me the eight pages of information that you're going to get with your nanosilver, then uh, when I was reading his commentary, I could see that I'm dealing with somebody that's really, really smart. And I've worked, um, I've been invented and worked with Dr. Uh, Chibley in a press medical Corporation. I was president and CEO of Press Medical Corporation, to give you an idea, and invented a new way to get kidney stones out of people, pressure sheet technology. I, my body was making kidney stones every 10 months, and I would be a stoner to this day if my entire urinary system was not pressurized and we removed all of my kidney stones in a single procedure. So I've worked with doctors and invented, even though I've tried three times go patent pending, and one, for one reason or another, the one attorney that I had in Minnesota said, you're going to get a couple of patents out of this. My, my um, life was coming apart there, and I just told him, never mind. I know, I know. It sounds crazy that I could do something like that, but I was going through. I almost died in Minnesota from a bacterial, and not a, a viral infection. They didn't even know what it was. I was in the hospital a week. I, I went to Minnesota, completely black hair. I came back with gray hair. Almost died up there. So there was a lot going on then. Anyway, I'm just saying that I have a lot of experience working with uh, doctors. And I'm not kidding you. I'm reading um, Doug's work. And I felt like that I was working with one of them, with Dr. Shibley, you know, or another doctor. So 
that there was a misunderstanding there and we got that straightened out that he's not a doctor i'm not a doctor either but i've helped like he's helping me like a doctor would i've helped other people with the kidney stone removal techniques and things like that there's low tech methods so that you can remove a five um, um, millimeter stone trapped in the bottom of your ureter there's a simple method that you can use to expel that baby to uh, stop acute hydronephrosis. So um, anyway, he got that straightened out. Then also uh, straightened out the bottle because the bottles that he ships them in do not have the droppers. I couldn't find, when I Googled two two liter bottles, uh, two two ounce bottles, I looked and looked and looked. I couldn't find two with just caps on them. They all had the tops with the uh, droppers on them. But I finally today, it took me a while. I had to go, I couldn't use Google. It wouldn't give me one. I had to go to Bing. And after about three pages, and I finally found one, so I got that replaced. Then uh, on the updates, if you guys aren't getting updates on my videos, let me see if I, I don't have, oh yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is Crystal. She interviewed me. This is where hers is going to show up. But I really need to take you to one of my videos one of my videos which I can do right here and um, so here's the one that I just I just uploaded right here and this is where it says it please like subscribe and ring the bell for updates so since there's not there's nothing in my in my newsletters or anything about how to get your updates from YouTube it's right here in the description box of every one of my videos so that was just something that that Doug overlooked so whenever you whenever you share this with somebody then they should read the description and hit the subscribe button and then you're gonna see a bell that's there in the old days you didn't have to do that you just hit the subscribe and you automatically got the updates they don't do that anymore you must subscribe and ring the little bell thingy and then all the videos I make are going to show up in your with your other subscription videos. So that's uh, that's important. And uh, some people have told me that my first, if I make three videos in a day, the first one comes through, the other two don't. But that's because they didn't ring the bell too. Pretty sure about that. Okay, let's get back over here. I'm gonna try. I'm, wa I'm watching the length of this video. I don't want to get too long for you. And and then uh, the last point that he made here was that we ran them out of bottles so uh, but it's still if you're in the lower 48 it's still gonna be one to two weeks because we're telling people one or two weeks but they're actually getting there a week or a little bit under a week I'm just telling you one to two weeks in case he has a little uh, hiccup from uh, from all the orders that he's getting he probably hasn't seen this many orders in a while but he said if you're in the lower 48 you're still gonna get your shipment within one to two weeks if you're in, outside of the continental United States lower 48 then it's going to be two to three weeks that's what I'm telling people but that's going to be closer to the two-week side than the three two also so um then the mystery report news uh, three uh, four new subscribers this week Thomas Elena Charles and Cheyenne it's a very that's a really pretty name I, you don't see somebody named Cheyenne every day it reminds me that I am a part six day person that I'm uh, descended from on both sides of my family I actually have Creek Indian in them from uh, the southeastern United States then uh, so there's 31 supporters of the mystery report program now you remember that we have if you're a newsletter only then you have access to all the newsletters they're in the Dropbox folder there's a ton of information in there too also just getting your hands on one of these newsletter you see this radio series there's an extra one here every week these are from my video series that were done back in 2012 on awakened radio on this topic 2012 five years before the printing of my book and about seven years after my book was written so it's in between time and so this is a little extra background information on what we're doing right now and my apologies last week last week was was this week is busier than last week but last week then I, on Tuesday it had been like a month and a half since I had sleeping in my own bed you can imagine how grumpy somebody can get when you're sleeping on an air mattress out in the living room 
and last Tuesday is when I, I got through writing Brian and then ran and tried to get the, the uh, in, down in the bedroom was just plywood. You couldn't, you know, it was a construction area. So I had to put down the, the uh, flooring, you know, and, and uh, it took me until 8, 10 before I got everything done. Cause I'm, I was like a, like, I am back in, in my old construction days, trying to get it all done. I'm tired. I'm sore. I've been working. And then all of a sudden I realized that it's Tuesday and I go, oh my goodness. And, um, it was eight o'clock is eight ten before I could get to the, get the room open. My sincerest apologies for that. You know, generally I'm there 10 minutes early and open up the room. But, um, since then I'm getting a little bit better. I'm still swamped with work. But at least I'm sleeping now in my own bed, and I'm slowly recovering from a month and a half of, uh, of tossing and turning at night. Um, so I'm usually very regular about that, and I was off, and I'm kind of embarrassed about that too. But um, I hope that you'll understand. Now, I'll, I'll be there early with bells on tonight. And for those of you that don't, don't know what that is, this is what I'm talking about right here. And um, so, the mystery explained, God's hidden wisdom. This is our chat room. This is where people come in, and they'll be right here. You, When you want to come up and talk, you just push the button here, and then see one waiting. So you can have people in line. You guys can just come up and ask me your questions, and I can answer them. You can type them. Most people type, and usually I do all the talking. And um, one th thing that people have a... Uh, they think that this mic thingy here means that your mic is locked. That's not what it means. So whenever I click on this, it's going to turn green. So I'm talking in the room right now. I let go. Then it's blue. I'm not talking. But if, I want, if I'm going to be the only one talking, and you guys are going to type out your questions, then I'm going to click this lock button, and it's going to lock it for me. So now I'm talking. Pardon me. I'm talking in the room. You guys can be writing your questions, and I can just go question to question to question to question. That's the way that it works. So some people think their mic is locked when actually that lock thing is there for you to push when you want to lock your mic and continue speaking. So this is where we meet every Tuesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And you say, well, why Tuesday night? Well, this is the day of the report. And everybody goes to church on Wednesday nights. Can't do it. Can't do it on Thursday. That's my Black Star Report Day. Tuesday's the day. That's the... So if you're a $25 mystery report newsletter guy and you want to join us over here all you have to do is go to the website right over here when you sign up you sign you hit this button and you're a $25 guy $25 per year two bucks a month and then you get all access to all the newsletters but you're not coming to chat with us every Tuesday you want to do that you don't have to come over and push this premium button that's what this upgrade button's for 50 see 25 plus 25 is 50 start off is just read when you start reading everything that's in the Dropbox folder watching all the videos hours and hours and hours but then you realize I want more then you come over here and hit this and then you're I'm gonna upgrade you send you a different notification email it's gonna have the same Dropbox folder link for accessing all the newsletters and everything but it's also gonna have instructions on where you go to register and where you need to be and the password to get into the room in case we use it we're not using the password at the moment it was um it's, it's been myself and about a half a dozen people each week so far meeting right here in this room i'll be here with bells on early you know like 10 minutes early i feel bad about uh about what happened last week well, this is still the update the update so this is uh, and i'm keeping these at the top here how do we join the chat room activities? Because people are continuing to ask me questions on this. How to receive mystery report news. That's not what you're going to do in the Dropbox folder. You come over here and subscribe. If you want the premium, then it's right over here. As soon as you subscribe, you're eligible for Doug's. That's why I hope that you'll share these videos. As soon as one of your friends subscribes, they qualify for Doug's Nano Silver offer. And it could be that we're under lockdown. In a month, it could be that we're under lockdown. So they're, they're, the, the two different scenarios are that this is over by April or May. 
the other scenario is that we're, we could be locked down in 30 days. We're within the 24-day gestation period of this bug that could even have a longer gestation period than that. Okay, this is what I was talking about, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. This is my clarifying statements that I'm going to make to Goijing. Is that his name? That's the topic title. This is the link to my opening post. And this is what he's going to He's going to start hacking on me and criticizing. And he's going to say, and the way that he sees it, that Jesus Christ in the flesh is during the four Gospels. And that Christ Jesus is the resurrected and ascended Christ. Which sounds right, doesn't it, to a lot of people. It sounds right, but it's not right. I say we disagree. And this uh, topic seems to be a bit over the heads of our fellow cf.com. It's christianforums.com. Let me show you where. Let me show you where that is. I have it pulled up here, right here. This is the Disby room. Not that I am a dispensationalist. Elaine is a dispensationalist, and I've worked a lot with Disbys. There are some things that uh, Disbys are, that we're going to agree on, and there's things that we're going to absolutely disagree on. So I went to uh, Bible study five years with Disbys. I love debating with Disbys, but when it says uh, uh, mid acts dispensationalist only, I can't go there. I'm not really a Disby. So um, this is where I hope that you'll come and register, christianforums.com. I've been a member here since 2004. Tons and tons of uh, different topics. You can search under my name. And you can write me questions here. And so we can interact here. I'm usually here on Sundays and Mondays, pretty much exclusively. And writing content for the, for the newsletter. So this is the people seeing now uh, this guy might be in the newsletter for next week. And so far, my topics are, yeah, they're staying, you know, pretty up here near the top. There's a couple of them down here. The difference between God, my Father, art, and heaven, they, nobody wants to challenge that. The two Gospels of the New Testament, Dan did back in, it was still in January. God's true Bible code right here. The mystery of Adam, nobody wants to write on that. Lots of readers, nobody. So if you want to come in here, register, and make some, ask me some questions on these. These are going to go to the archives unless somebody hits them. You can ask me a question. That could be in the um, next newsletter. Okay, so then I'm going to say to him, um, many will gather evidence in drawing their conclusions, for drawing their conclusions from Paul's statements to the Corinthians. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and all died for all, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. This is the reason that you cannot be born again. When people write me about how they're born again, it makes me cringe. That's John 3. And the Greek is anothen born from above it, the uh, old King James is where it's born again and every other there's two uses of the word that are that they say is born again I mean that they say again that they translate again and they both both of those should be from above every other use of the term in the New Testament is from above that's what it should say but um, we cannot be born again because we're a new creature we're brand new created in Christ Jesus Four good works, Ephesians 2, start at 8, end up in 10. That's where it's, what it's going to say there. So many think that Christ Jesus is Jesus Christ after his resurrection, but the problem is that, well, Paul is a problem because of what Paul writes. And he says, I give my commentary up here, but it's going to show Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus in the same verse. But God, being rich in his mercy because of his great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is him. Christ is right here. Jesus Christ, together with Christ. But we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Christ Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as heaven of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. 
Those are the, where the heavenly places are that we're being seated in. And I have diagrams that show you that. So that in the ages to come, he might show us the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards those of us that are in Christ Jesus. So what God's going to teach the heavenly angel, the mighty angels, almost infinite, powerful, mighty angels are all looking over God's shoulder and looking down on what God's doing with us. Like two little herds of goats in the Old Testament. And he's just, he's going to take over, he's showing everybody how the cow eats the cabbage. And he's going to do it with this little body of Christ, showing us that his grace is greater than the works of all men and all angels combined. Peter, John, and James are going to join us in Christ Jesus by works. Read Revelation 11. I'm sorry, Revelation 19, start at 5, the marriage supper of the Lamb. They are cleaning their garments, they're washing their garments, their works and works, they're serving them day and night, working and working. And working and working and working. So they can go to the marriage supper of the Lamb and join us in Christ Jesus. And then they're going to see us in there already. And we're big and giant and powerful. And they're going to be like the women of the members of the body of Christ compared to us. God is blessing us through his grace. And giving us things for free that everybody else is earning by works. And ours is going to be glorious, magnificent, shiny, beautiful stones, razor edges that the light glistens off of lights up the eyes of our brethren so they can see us the way that we really are as sons of God glorious sons of God where Peter John and James and those guys they're gonna have stones all right but they're gonna be more rough cut and they're gonna be more earth tony and they're not gonna allow them to go into the inner passageways of the temple of God like our stones are gonna open doors for us the only way they're gonna go in those doors is if we hold them by the hand and walk them around and lead them back out. So uh, then here's another problem. Paul, whenever one of the longest sentences in the whole Bible is the opening of Romans. First seven verses, one sentence. And this is what he says. He says, Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus. So I have Christ Jesus with a little asterisk here, and, the, and Jesus Christ with the number sign. A bondservant of Christ Jesus. See, he's the bondservant of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. Christ Jesus is the man, one mediator between God and men. Right here, Christ Jesus. Heavenly man, Christ Jesus. Between God, there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. When he's called a man there, it's not a human man. It's a man that has a spirit, soul, and a body. The number of man is six. One plus two plus three. There's a numerology here. All spirit witnesses have number one. All the blood witnesses are number two. All of them are number three. The blood witness is most interesting because it's the one that came last because it's begotten by these two. It comes last, but it's made first. When you see that he, he the last is first and the first is last, the Holy Spirit came first. The power from on high had to overshadow the Holy Spirit, and then the Son was begotten. The Son became last, but made put in front of the water witness servant. So the numerology you might think is one, two, three, but it's not. It's one, two, three. This way. One plus two plus three is six. That's why six is the number of man. But even God to come, God who is, God who was, is a man. The heavens, heaven, and earth is a man. All of these are men. All these three witness mystery sets are men. They have a spirit, soul, and a body. That's the key. So Paul is going to mess it up for you because after Christ is raised, here it's going to talk about him being a, a uh, born a descendant who was born of a descendant of David. He's actually conceived of the Holy Spirit, though, Matthew 1, 18 and 20. Declared the Son of God with power of the resurrection of the dead. According to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ. See, if if what was being presented above was true, Paul would have called Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord right here, but he didn't. He refers to Christ Jesus here in the same sentence because they're different. This is, like I said earlier, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that Paul serves between God and men, heaven incarnate. This is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the Lamb of God on the earth. 
And the Lamb of God is still in heaven. Just like Christ Jesus is still in the heaven, the highest heaven. Like the Word is still one with God in the infinite realm. I know it gets kind of complicated, but this is the way God made it. That's the way that it is. The Lamb of God in heaven is the incarnation of Christ Jesus in this realm. It takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God in heaven incarnated on the earth as Jesus Christ. That's why he's called in John 1.29. The Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. Now that's Jesus Christ is the incarnation of the Lamb of God. But they all exist. They're all still here. They're all incarnations. Through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles in his, for his name's sake. His name's sake is Jesus Christ among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ, to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, or holy ones. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. But he's a bondservant of Christ Jesus at the same time. One sentence. So, it's it's um, you hear me chuckling a little bit, because I've seen these things for decades, it's so long. So whenever people see things differently, this creates an opportunity for clarifying statements to help you to see things more clearly. So this is the same diagram that I just showed you up there. I noticed that it does, uh, this this one here came out pretty darn clear in the PDF. Some of them don't come through so clear. So I look at uh, over into, fi um, into figure two to realize Jesus Christ was raised among, this should be above all the heavens. I'm gonna try to remember to change that. And that's from Ephesians 4. All the heavens of this creation to be seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Testifying as heaven of Genesis 1.1. Christ Jesus is heaven of Genesis 1.1. Broken down into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who incarnated into heaven as the Lamb of God. There's a heaven of Genesis 1. And there's a heaven of Genesis 1.8. This is heaven where the Lamb of God is, and this is the highest heaven, where Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God. That's the diagram that I was showing you, where John is looking straight across, looking, standing here and looking straight across these realms, with the cherub example from above. Why do dispensationalists chop up the Bible into different ages? And I'm a little tough on this. This is one of the reasons that I cannot consider myself to be a dispy, is if you're going to go run, running around talking about Age, the age of grace, there's no such thing as in the age of grace. Please don't do that. There's no such thing. It's not scriptural. If you want to talk about Shekinah is not scriptural, there's no such thing as the age of grace. There's a dispensation of God's grace. Ephesians, if you go to the Old King James, and it's going to be Ephesians 3, 2. The dispensation of God's grace that was given to me for you. Have our revelation was named to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. So, one does not have to use the word dispensation. One does not have to use the word dispensation if they really don't like that term. This is what he wrote. This is, I like to put his, all his work here without chopping it up. Then I'm going to start chopping it up. You guys can go and read what he says here. He's got Adam and Eve eating an apple. It's a, there's no apple. That's the symbolism. It's the knowledge of the the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That's where the seed comes from. That's how the good seed and your seed, your the her seed, the righteous branch, and your seed, the bad, that's how come Cain and Abel came out the same womb because of the seed that came through. They're in heaven eating that seed. They're not having children until they're putting skins on the earth. Okay, so thank you for pointing out the flaw because he says one does not have to like the word discipline. Um, if they really don't like the term, my apologies, I'm hurrying, I'm looking at the time. Um, that's okay, but you must clearly see that there were ages in the past. You see the mistake he's making? He's talking about ages, aeon, in reference to dispensations, and they are nowhere near being the same thing. So many dispies think they are the same thing, and they're not. Whenever they start going on about the age of grace, I start rolling my eyes, and I'm just wondering where to begin. To help them to see it, so um, so they're, he's pointing out he's he's going on about an age of grace and there's no such thing. Um, this is where the term is used for um, this reason. I, Paul, the prisoner of uh, for the sake of you Gentiles, 
If indeed, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of God's grace which is given to me for you, that by revelation was made known to me the mystery, as he wrote before in brief. Now some people think that is a reference to a previous letter, but it's not. It's what he wrote in Ephesians 1, 9-11 through 11, that he's referring to. The same book, the same opening. When he opened up, he talked about it. Now he's talking about it again. He's describing it more thoroughly in Ephesians 3. So when you read, and I dissect this word for word in my book, The Mystery Explained, Ephesians 3. It's one of the most important chapters in the whole Bible, along with Colossians 1. The prison epistles. God gave them license to write about this only after the close of Acts, 61 AD. Okay, so then by looking, by reading what you're reading, you're going to understand his insight into the mystery of Christ. So you can, use, you can see the term dispensation used here, dispensation of God's grace. It concerns a household. This is the term. This is the real Greek term, what it really means, primarily signifies the management or a, of a household, a household or affairs. What it means is, House rules. So Israel of the flesh. The house rules for Israel of the flesh is Mosaic law. They live under the law until heaven and earth passes away. Matthew 5, start at 17. Or go to James chapter 2, 10. If they stumble in one point, they're guilty of breaking the whole law. That's not us, though. We are part of the dispensation of God's grace. We're the body of Christ. We're a different household. God gives us different instructions, different rules than he does the house, the, the, uh, house of Israel or the kingdom bride, Peter, John, and James. Different dispensations. And there are many more dispensations. People say there's one, there's eight. There are thousands of dispensations, thousands of them. God has relationship with cherubim. He has relationship with angels. He has relationships with uh, the sons from space. He has relationship with six-day people. Be fruitful and multiply. He has relationships with members of Christ's body. There's all kinds of dispensations. There, you cannot limit the number of dispensations that God has with his created hosts because God's been in the creation business for an infinite amount of time. So it just shows the limitations of your understanding when you try to limit God by giving him a certain number of dispensations. The next thing is, oh, oh, let's get down to the end of this definition from Vine's uh, Dictionary. A dispensation is not a period or epoch. And I could add to that, it is not a time. Chronos, times. It is not a period, an epoch, a time. It does not a period of time. It doesn't have anything to do with time. It has to do with a household, house rules. So this is my strength, it is church doctrine, grace doctrine for the Christ body, kingdom doctrine for the body, for the kingdom bride and then Israel under the law okay three different households those are the three primary dispensations of Scripture under different stewards Paul is our steward of the dispensation of God's grace Peter was the steward remember Christ gave him the keys he says whatever you bound on earth has already been bound in heaven Matthew 16 star 16 you can read all about it and it's not connected to him being the Messiah he warns him in verse 20, that same verse, when he's talking about my church. It's the kingdom bride church. That's a totally different dispensation, not to be accused, confused with a time or an epoch or an age or anything like that. Okay, so. It's an erroneous use of the term. It's, you, know, you understand that what the, the, the term erroneous means? means you're doing it in error. Look at the root word. It's, it's error. Don't do it. Don't do that. It's not a period or an epoch, but a mode of dealing, an arrangement, or administration of affairs. The way that I like to look at it is house rules. Okay? So a steward. To be a steward. Paul is a steward. Peter was a steward. Elijah is going to be the steward when he starts up the kingdom for the late reigns bride during the day of the Lord. Moses is the steward of the of uh, over all of Israel under Mosaic law that doesn't make Moses any better than the Lord it doesn't make him the Lord God or anything near what the Lord God is the Lord God gives him everything through the agency of angels Moses just dispenses the law to Israel Paul is dispensing grace doctrine in the same way it's not putting focus on Paul 
other than to say that he's the steward. The steward, you know what a steward is? You ever been to the union? You have a shop steward. He's a, a steward is a slave, just like you are, that you elect, that you put in charge, if you're in the union. We vote on it. I know, because I, I, whenever I get old enough, I'm going to collect my union for being a bricklayer. Not old enough yet. But we had a shop steward, and I know exactly what it means. Moses is just another slave like everybody else, but he's the one chosen for the Lord God to dispense Mosaic law. Just like Paul dispenses grace doctrine to us, Peter was dispensing kingdom doctrine. In his epistle, his epistles, he's dispensing kingdom doctrine to the kingdom bride. Just like James is doing. Just like all the kingdom books, Hebrews is written to them. It's written for you, but it's written to them. So it's active. All of the scripture is living, but not all scripture is active. Paul's epistles are active for you. The Old Testament is active for Israel. The kingdom New Testament epistles are active for the kingdom bride that are going to come and live during the day of the Lord. If the kingdom bride who obey the gospel of the kingdom try to live by what's in the Pauline epistles, they're going to fail. They must go what's in kingdom doctrine that's taught by Peter, John, and James. They must do that. It was taught in Hebrews. They must do that. They, at the end of the age, when the devil comes, he's going to mix Paul's gospel with the gospel of the kingdom and do what people do today. Mix it all together and get everybody confused. They're going to think that they're doing the right thing, but they're not. That's how diluting influence works. It's at work today. Okay. So, th this is... Uh, the difference between this is this is his topic. My defending arguments, clarifying statements, they are for topics I started and they're trying to come and they're trying to say something else. This is where he started and I come along and do the same thing for him. So he only wrote a couple of sentences and you can see there's a lot of information here. Question and answers for this week. Then um, I wanted to answer Elena, didn't have the time. I see Trevor that you wrote me. My apologies, I just didn't have the time to be able to do that. I'm going to do the best that I can to get you for this for for the next newsletter, and um, you're going to be able to see Elena's work down here. But uh, I'm sorry, Trevor, I did, the, your your question came in I think yesterday, and there must be 40 or 50 new subscribers, 40 or 50 orders for Nano Silver, and I'm working from first time when I wake up in the morning, and into the night and trying to catch up. So I'm, my apologies for that. Then, um, oh, this is, uh, I see I have some, oh, I left it this way for a reason, okay. Then the questions and the answers this week, because nano silver is so important, then that's what was put in here. Question and answers are questions from supporters to Doug about this, uh, about the nano silver. No, it's not going to turn your skin blue. And then um, Kenna was thinking that, that it had to be taken using a nebulizer, but then Doug's going to answer here. And um, see, here's going to be Doug's reply. So this is uh, Doug and Kenna interacting, and you guys are benefiting from that. Then the featured article uh, down here is Elena wrote, and I wanted to go through and do what I usually do, but there would, really wasn't a lot to correct in what Elena's writing. She's a Disby, and uh, I don't know yet if, if you're a traditional, if you're a mid-axe, if you're a hyper from X2828. There's a lot of different kinds of dispies, but um, I really enjoyed reading. There were a couple of things that I was going to um, to make comments on, but all in all, um, here on the restrainer, I was just going to add that that's the spirit of prophecy is what it is. God's word cannot be broken. If A comes first, then B, then C, then D, D cannot happen. It's The restrainer is the spirit of prophecy saying that A must come first. A will be done first, 100% for sure. Then B, then C, then D, just like reading Matthew 24. You start at the top, and they ask him a question. Tell us about your coming and the end of the age, and he just starts rattling it off. This is happened first, the second, third. Get to verse 9, they will kill you. Verse 14, the gospel of the kingdom goes to the whole world. The ends will come. Then the abomination of desolation. Then the great tribulation. Then... You see, the Great Tribulation can't come before 
It cannot come before the man of sin sets up his abomination of desolation. That's the difference between verse 15 and 16 and verse 21. Christ says the order. The spirit of prophecy is working right through his, his vocal cords as he's speaking. And the limiting factor, the inhibitor, the restrainer, Paul talks about, is the spirit of prophecy. Saying A must happen before B before C. So the Antichrist can't come when there's no temple, for example. The Antichrist is already here. He's working in the inner part of man, just like the mystery of Christ is working in the inner part of man. They're working side by side, the mystery of Christ and the mystery of iniquity. When we're taken from this earth, the mystery of Christ is going to stop here. There's going to be no incarnation of heaven inside of people like it does for us at any time during the day of the Lord. That's not what they're being called to. They're being called to become a kingdom of priests. They're going to stand on that sea of glass in front of us. We're going to, when the last preacher is taken, there's no preacher for God to send. Okay, so what's happening here is about to end here. Is we're going to take it to heaven with us. There's going to be a certain number of us. From the beginning of the day of the Lord to the end of the day of the Lord. Same number of us. There's going to be a certain number that stands on the sea of glass too. When the last one's killed, that's when the abomination of desolation can be set up. Not until. Oh, you can see... That Elena, she's a lady after my own heart. She loves the Lord and loves Scripture like I do. And, um, well, I shouldn't say just like me. I mean, I can say the same thing about Trevor, same, say the thing, same thing about Najee. We have these things in common, and Kathy and others, and uh, Brian, obviously, and others that we're, when we're meeting on our, our um, Tuesday nights, then you can tell that people love the Lord and love his word and that they, they they're hungering for more that's what it's about but we're not going to agree on everything like I don't agree with everybody in the Dispies and um, if this was normal if everything was happening normal I had, had some time then I would have wanted to go through and maybe split hairs with you in a couple of places but no this is I wanted to leave it up here just like it is and whenever time permits I'm going to come back there was only like one or two things that I was going to split hairs with you on. Nothing dramatically wrong that I could see there. Then um, the coronavirus is, uh, this is in the primary section, part of the news. Mindy's our, uh, she's the lady that helped me through my walking pneumonia. And her statement here about, I heard you, your your coronavirus update. Glad you mentioned Nano Silver, that it's her go-to antiviral. That's going to be true of a lot of people that are not mesmerized by the FDA, and you just, you're just only going to use the approved, stamped and approved vaccine that likely has something else in it, right? So this is the, the homeopathic or the naturalist cure. This is something you can take, not just because you have the bug to kill it. It's something you can take to prevent getting the bug. Remember, 80,000 people died from flu last year in the United States, 80 grand. This protects you from that, the regular flu. So once you mix it up and you do it the proper way, the way that, that uh, Doug just said, then you only have to take a teaspoon in the morning, teaspoon in the evening, teaspoon. You're making three liters at the time. It takes a long time to go through 12.68 liters, teaspoon at a time, I'm just saying. It gives you a lot of protection. And not just against the coronavirus and not just against the flu bug. But if you have a bacterial infection inside of your jaw, like I had, it's going to kill it. Lots of health, health benefits from doing that. Then, David, you're doing a great job. New, if you read the Black Star reports, he sends in the articles. He's done it religiously since 2000, January 2012, every single week, without fail. He's my partner. And Bill is too. That started the news. That started right off in the beginning, right off the start. He did it for six or seven years, the website, until he had a quintuple uh, uh, bypass surgery. Then, um, then I had to learn to do it myself. But um, right at the beginning, New and Bill stood up with me. We were like the tandem trio that started the Black Star. And um, God bless Bill and um, New. That's his screen name. And now, David, the reason that this mystery report program began 
is because my bacterial infection and I and I and all the money that was going out the door, I was like get, starting to get scared that uh, it wiped out my survival savings. And I and then we got this other bug. I was going to dermatologist. Things were it was just terrible. So when uh, Dave wrote me about the same time, and I was praying about it at the same time, and he and then I wrote him back and asked him, "Will you help me?" Because if new wasn't helping me, getting the Black Star reports out every week would be twice as difficult for me. The new is God sent to me, and David is too. And he, he did mess up a couple times, brother. He messed up a couple times, but he was helping with the survival group people. And you know, he explained to me later, and I got him gone to him a little bit, but he's getting better and better at this. And um, keep up the good work. I greatly appreciate it. Um, American woman. 83 test positive for coronavirus disembarking from a Holland from a disembarking disembarking Holland sh American ship my apologies I'm a little bit shoddy I'm running low on sleep <laughs> my mind is like jelly from all from all processing everything that I've been doing then uh, so this is gonna suck a lot of the air out of the room on the um, I mean you're still gonna get my clarifying statements you're gonna get my questions and answers debates and things like that but right, this is going to dominate the news moving forward. It's only going to get worse. These bet giant ships look like incubators. Why they are keeping people on these ships, they'll have a clue. Unless they know the gestation period is like 36 days. It was thir three days, 14 days. Now they say, well, it could be 24. It could be that it, in some people that gestation period, the incubation period, is even longer than that. That's why they're not showing symptoms. It's hiding. The perfect biological weapon is going to do that. It's the reason that it's going to hide is because you can transmit it. You don't even show symptoms of it. And then, same thing happens in China. That's what I was saying. I don't think it's all China's fault. I don't think they were hiding. They didn't realize what it was because you have the regular flu bug. You have regular seasonal stuff that's happening and then this is happening at the same time but it has such a long gestation period they weren't able to identify what this what is happening here then whenever they were able to identify it the cat was already out of the bag that's the nature of the beast though now they're trying to shut people up but they tried to contain city of, of millions of people and then once that started the tighter you grip the more slip through your fingers and people are getting out they're wanting to run away from it but as they're running away from it they're carrying the bug and it's gestating. They don't even have a symptom. They're just worried. And then they're spreading it to people. And I believe that's what's happening in the United States right now. Christians uh, risk lives to help fight coronavirus in China. And if, I, if, 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 if you're me, I'm not climbing a mountain just because it's there. I'm not going to try to swim an ocean, the English Channel or something, just because it's there. And I'm not going to China. God bless you guys. I ain't going there. That's not the place. That's the eye of the storm. It is not where you want to be. And I'm not going to California either. The, the, a lot of the cases are starting over there. The high population centers you have there. All the illegals you have there. That's a that's a factory. It's a gestation factory waiting. Because you have people there from all over the planet that aren't supposed to be there in a sanctuary state that just says, come on in. California. And, uh, the, the, and in my report I just gave, the... Seismic signatures coming out of California are getting concerning to me. The, the quake swarm areas are changing. If we have the average of the 10 kilometer depth that it's usually one, three, four, five up in the crust kilometers. Now the average is going to be 10. That's magma plume signatures. That's happening. I'm really worried about what's going on in the U.S. West Coast as we speak, not just because of the coronavirus. No, that's not a place that I'm wanting to go. Anywhere west of the Rocky Mountain Ridge, you ain't seeing me over there. I'm not going there just because it's there. I don't have. It's it's scary. When you understand the geology, you understand the, where the magma plume formation is, where the convergence area is, where the buoyancy barrier is going to break. That's not where I want to be. So um. That that's why there's a survival group program, and that's why I'm writing Rebecca, right now and trying to make arrangements. Because I'm I'm wanting to see my my butt on the North American craton. And not out here on the thin, um, not in Florida. Florida is not the place to be for, for lots of reasons. So that's uh, the coronavirus story. 
this is with this was still on from yesterday this, I, this is almost 2000 right now I usually update that just for I did it my apologies I forgot signs of the times birds it, uh, India's birds suffering dramatic population declines it's part of the signs of the times Half a million mussels found dead in New Zealand beach. Here's wash them up on the shore, dead. Signs of the times. I'm not saying this is the end of the age. This is how the day of the Lord begins. Remember, the black star starts the day of the Lord and ends it. So you're going to have many of the same things happening today that Christ is talking about in Matthew 24. The earthquakes. He doesn't mention the tsunamis in that account. He does in Luke when he's describing the same things. Tsunamis, men fainting from fear fainting from fear because whenever this geological pole shift stuff starts people are going to see what's happening and they're going to absolutely turn white as ghosts and fall over they're not going to believe what's happening the earth is going to be tipped over six meter high snow blankets Iran sign of the times this is because of the polar vortex phenomenon here in Florida the AC is running in the night The January, I saw the report, January, warmest for the entire world in history. This January we just had. This year could be the hottest year in history. It depends on the polar vortex, how much it comes down, how much it doesn't. So at the same time you have record snow and people up to their necks in snow, then you have adjacent areas that have not gotten snow and that it's warm unseasonably. UK braced for record flooding, storm, dentist. Uh, dumps a month's worth of rain in 24 hours a month's worth of rain in 24 hours signs of the times this is these are all signs that we have an intruder in the inner solar system the White House doesn't trust China's coronavirus numbers and here's why I don't trust China's numbers either there there's far more deaths that that, that happening there's a lot more people dead than it's being reported for sure the um, what we should be seeing in the chart is this number of deaths should be going up parabolic with the number of new cases. They should be going up, 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 straight up almost at this point. The, the uh, population is going to obtain a natural immunity to this in time after we're exposed. A certain percentage of the population aren't going to have any symptoms and their, their immune system is going to kill the bug. Our bodies are going to recognize the bug and it's going to, it's going to, kill the bug but this is something that's brand new it's just now in the United States and it's going to be a t take a while before that happens so the the ones that are obviously going to be more um, influenced the propensity is going to be higher for the elderly the people with compromised immune systems people with AIDS young people the ones that are going to but the uh, the ones I worry about are the illegals not the people that have been here that have had good health care all their lives, they have a doctor, people that have not had a doctor, people that have weakened immune systems. They, they, you don't know what uh, propensities they have. You don't know what diseases they already have. You don't know what viruses they're already carrying around that can interact with this virus when it gets inside of them. It could be an illegal alien from Kenya. It could be because they're, they're in this country from every country on earth, not just Mexicans. They're coming through Mexico across the southern border, but they're from everywhere. And there could be people that know they have the coronavirus that are trying to come here because they know that our medicine is better, that they're going to die in their country, they're going to try to get here so they can just get into an emergency room here in hopes that they can, but what are they doing? They're carrying the bug with them. I'm really afraid of what's going to happen, and we could easily be in lockdown in 30 days. So that's why you get, you're seeing a lot of my reports on here, a lot of warnings. Vulnerable parts of the U.S. economy that the coronavirus may influence, may affect. China will start destroying cash collected in areas with high exposure. They're just going to destroy it and make new ones. Because this bug is being transmitted. It, it can live outside the body for a long time, depending on the environment. Doorknobs and things like that. Outside the body. They're even wanting a storm for 14 days days I read a report that this thing can live outside our body for for longer periods than that so it's difficult to tell I'm not reporting on to you obviously everything that I see that crossed my desk I'm not doing that because it's it's this thing is so fluid it's difficult to tell 
what's real and what's not real. Feline coronavirus treatment could stop the spread of, see, this is one of those could things, maybe type of things. What is nanosilver? This is from that uh, page. What is it? The facts about nanosilver. I want you to know about that. This is how you can protect yourself as a shield right now. Then um, the second wave of flu hits U.S. children. A really bad time. This is what I was look, have been looking for for threat assessment. And this is a sign in our environment that the black star is almost here. Like I keep saying, we're watching the earth changes. Yeah. And we had two seven magnitude earthquakes in 200 days. That's not supposed to happen. We should have 10 over that period. Earth is telling us that there's something wrong. So that's what I have for you for um, for this report. Appreciate you guys' support very, very much. And my apologies if, I've, um, if I'm behind in answering you. I'm doing my very best. And um, get more information here at the website. I'll up the, update grade these to, uh, for those of you that are YouTubers that are not newsletter or survival group subscribers, mystery report subscribers. And this will be like number four or number six um, for both newsletters. So you can get your at least get your hands on a newsletter. Get more information right here at the website. And I'll see you on the next mystery report um, coming out next Tuesday. If there's time during the week that I'll make a midweek report, maybe answer a question. That's my goal moving forward whenever I have more time. Thank you guys again. Appreciate your support very, very much. And um, that's um, I'll see you on the next um, mystery report.